All right, manager account training. Master account manager training. Okay, account types. I just thought I'd give a little bit of an overview of the what and why of master and servant. Uh, product setup, and I think, you know, I, I know Carolyn's gone through all of this. She could probably do this class uh, <laughs> without me. Uh, product groups, because I know a lot of issues have been with what shows up on the kiosk and how. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. Uh, harvest rules. Uh, again, I know Carolyn's done it. We're going to go to uh, Retail is Central, and then again finish with uh, questions and a wrap-up. All right. Master account. Just so you, you're a little bit clearer if you have any um, questions of what is what. Uh, the ma master account basically administers all of the information that applies to all of your stores. Um, it's, it's not a local. It, it gets um, your business rules, your taxes. So that's all maintained at the master level. Um, the pricing is, is maintained at the master re uh, level, the products. So essentially the master account dictates to all the, and I'll call them satellite stores, other stores, um, what products, what prices, uh, the business rules, where it can be picked up, where it, shipping off options and that. Uh, all of that is at the master account. Uh, there must be only one master account. Uh, we actually had an issue. Uh, Jeff didn't understand that. He actually set up Holyoke as a master. And I think that was part of a problem that I didn't realize until after I got on there and I said, oh no. You really don't want that, and and he just didn't understand. So, okay, that, uh, that answers a lot. yeah, I think th I think there was that was where part of the issues came in when he was moving it to. Um, I think I've, I, I think he understands now that those all have to be servants. Um, and the reason, if, if you have two master accounts, there's there's no way we can prevent that. I mean, I the Melrose computer I can't talk to the. Uh, Holyoke computer directly and say, hey, you've got a master account, we can't do that. Um, but if both of them are uploading products and prices and, you know, one uploads and prices of this and then the other one uploads and, and, and all the rules change. So, must be only one master account. So, so Dave, just to clarify, if you had two accounts unknowingly trying to act as masters, it wouldn't break the solution, it would just start to cause it wouldn't break, no. But yeah, chaos would ensue. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why I, I knew that that had happened, and it was, you know, unfortunate. But it did. So that's why I wanted to make that clear. Uh, the servant account gets all its information. It, what what happens at a servant account is. Again, we use a, a sort of an, a one hour uh, break point and every hour the servant account says, hey, is there anything new with the master? Has anything been uploaded? And if the answer is no and we do it based on time, um, we will download the first time every day. Uh, when you start a new day, it will download just as you start up the product. But after that, it, it, it checks to see if there's been any changes there's been no changes, no, no download occurs, just goes on with its uh, regular um, processing for the day. Uh, the servant account administers the local things, basically just what we went over this morning. Print devices, email notices, anything that is, is, is local to that store. Uh, that is what is on the servant account. Um, and as you know here in Melrose, you can have more than one servant account set up in the same lab um, to harvest different things in different ways. And, uh, so uh, you can have multiple servant accounts at any given location, but, and obviously at satellite locations. You can have as, literally as many as you want. You know, wouldn't go too high, but you know, it, they, they will start to impact one another, uh, especially in harvesting. Um, but that's, that's the two accounts that we deal with, uh, the master and the servant. 
product setup. And uh, again, same picture, the products menu or the toolbar. And I also set up a master account just for example. And, and by the way, you can have the master account be the, the account that harvest orders at the, the location. Um, some do, some don't. You know, it's, it's basically a, a preference uh, type of situation. Uh, but as far as, you know, I want to get into products and all of that. The master account has the ability to create new standard products. It cannot create new specialty products or creative products, whichever. Um, those have to be created in the cloud cover and brought onto the master account to decide whether they will be um, published or not. But they can't, you can't create a new one in the sense of I don't have a whatever, a triple fold card for, for Valentine's Day. You can't just come up into the master account and create it. However, you can create any standard product, again, standard product, four by six, five by seven, you know, eight by eight, six by six. You can create anything you want as far as standard products. Um, went through this pretty much before, you know, you have your product selection, different product views. Um, you can uh, do a search uh, based, based on the keyword or, or whatever, you know, lockets, so, you know, that's easy. Uh, all of those facilities, nothing has changed as far as that goes in uh, between the master and the servant. The big difference is you have the ability to create a new product, so, which you'd give it a name, a description. It's by definition, it's a standard product, a price, uh, quantity price if possible. Um, do want to explain the weight. Uh, when we first started with this product, uh, shipping by weight was the way everything was done. Uh, so uh, we built this in so that if you're going to do any shipping, it would actually total the weight of the order based on what is put in here. And so you could basically charge, you know, if it was a weight between, you know, one ounce and 10 ounce or 11 ounce and whatever. Uh, you could charge different prices. That's the way the, the pricing worked for, uh, for the products. We have since added um, shipping by cost. So if the order is $49, you know, you have to pay shipping of $7 or whatever. If it's 50 or over, you, get, you can get free shipping. You know, that was, but that's all based on cost. And those, those are uh, business rules that you can you can set up um, so and if you're not actually harvesting orders here the output doesn't really matter just leave it the default if it's an account that's actually processing and uh, and printing orders then you'd obviously want to set up but the, the big thing is you can create a new standard product and this is how you would uh, do that and you can also can also copy a product. So if you have four by six glossy and luster, and now you want to add a different four by six type, uh, but the pricing is going to be the same, the quantity is going to be the same. Yeah, you know, the quantity pricing. Is, all you have to do is copy it, then you can just change the name certainly saves you re-entering the quantity discounts and, and all that. Um, simply hit the copy and there you go. And now you go up and you edit that and give it the right name and you have a new product. Um, I think I'm not sure. Yeah, copy, duplicate, edit, remove. You cannot remove a, um, again, a creative product for the same reason. You 
it's it comes from the cloud cover. It doesn't come, it's not created here, so you can't delete it. What you can do is no longer publish it and just turn off the publishing. Uh, so I could come up here now with this copy and say, I really didn't mean to do that. Remove it, it's gonna prompt you, and now that new product's gone. So you can remove any standard product that way. Uh, you cannot uh, do that for a, uh, a creative product or a specialty product. Uh, these publish buttons uh, online Kiosk is not really active because that's for LAN-based kiosks. And since you do all yours on uh, online, uh, that really never comes into play. But if you had a LAN kiosk, you could essentially uh, publish a subset to the kiosk. You don't have to publish to both. You can publish to one or the other uh, using uh, those buttons, but that has to be by LAN, uh, not by uh, online. When my kiosk doesn't cooperate, it gets very annoying. I do want to mention the finish options and uh, most of the quanti quantity pricing. You can go up to uh, 10 levels of quantity pricing, uh, different breakdowns, whatever uh, fits your need. Uh, and once you've done that, then that's automatic uh, when the order is placed. Uh, finish options, uh, there was discussion at one point, I think Chris was involved, I'm not sure who else. Um, right now you have a, a four by six glossy, a four by six luster. Uh, you could do that same thing using a finish option. You could have a four by six and then put in a finish option for luster and glossy. Now, let me tell you the, the downside of that. Right now, you can have a 4x6 glossy going to channel 10 and a 4x6 luster going to channel 11 on your easy controller. If you go to it as a finish option, it becomes a manual process. It will, it will print on the, uh, on the invoice. It'll tell you 4x6 uh, and the invoice will say finish option of glossy. That will print, but now you have to be responsible to say, okay, that means I want it to go here. Um, it, it, it cannot be a, an automatic process at that point. So you would basically have to turn off automatic printing uh, because it would, you know, 50% of the time it would go to the wrong device. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the benefit is that, you know, you have fewer products. You know, you only have one 4 by 6 instead of two. Um, or, you know, so you can cut your product numbers, but it does add a manual uh, process at the end when you're trying to print. Uh, uh, the, the user is, is forced to make a choice. Uh, there's obviously a default, but the user is forced to pick luster or glossy. Um, it makes it rather easy again. If you add another finish, you can just go into the finish options and say, you know, add whatever, um, type finish uh, and, you know, add it that way without, you know, not add another product. So th there's, there's a good and a bad to this. The good is it reduces the number of products, so it reduces the list that um, you're looking at, the customer's looking at. The downside is it's more work for the lab operator at the end. Again, that's choices. Um, that we have to make in life, and you know, you can go either way on that. Uh, depends upon how your how your workflow is, uh, and the, and the like. Uh, you can 
you know, if that, uh, get back there one more time. You can charge additional um, for, for finish options. So, for example, if the 4x6, you could have a 4x6 glossy and that could be 25 cents. But the luster is plus a penny. So you could put down additional cost of one cent if you want to get a luster. Uh, so you can, each individual uh, finish option can have an additional price. As, as necessary, depending upon what you're adding. So, so just one thing. We're, I have seen the finishing option used most effectively is with mounting. So if you have a poster, 16 by 20 poster you're printing, you could then offer data board mounting for the initial X dollars. So for, so for those kinds of things, I mean, I, I know Dave's, you know, Dave's trying to highlight how it gets used for how to think about all your standard products, but the way you could increase your revenue in a finishing option would be to think about all those upsells of your higher end products. So posters would be one. Another one has been Christmas cards. If you had a sort of standard envelope and you wanted to sell a premium envelope, you could do that for a finishing option. So the point, you know, the real objective is to, you know, is to use it as a way of extending the transaction and basically getting an upsell out of the transaction. Yeah, I've also seen it with, um, with wrapping for the, you know, for like posters. That, you know, you can add wrapping to it. And all, all of those things are uh, possibilities for finish options, you know, depending you upon could, the product. You could offer frames. Do a right. So, uh, so those are some things that it can be used for. I, I, I just wanted to, you know, get the point. You know, there was a discussion about right. on the, especially for the. Have you ever used this before, Bob? Finishing options. I'm not for finishing. You don't offer finishing. Yeah, I mean, it's and, and by the way, you know, I'm going to go into um, uh, mess with Carolyn's mind a little bit and look at uh, harvest rules. Um, but you can have, for example, we'll use the poster. You, you say you don't offer finishing. Um, right. But for example, if um, let's say. It, it gets it, it gets tougher because not all the stores print all the sizes, but if one store, for example, if Melrose decided that we're going to do foam covers and you know backings and all that, and we want to offer it online, you could in the harvest options say if the finish option is you know a foam core, even though it's going to be picked up in Portland print it here and ship it up because of that finishing option specifically. So, it, you know, the harvest rules can get down to the finish option level. Um, and I won't say it's not confusing and not, um, I won't say difficult, but it, it's very structured and you really have to think it through so that you don't wind up printing the 16 by 20s at two places, you know, <laughs> inadvertently. Uh, but it can be done. And uh, it would be a way of using, you know, if you have a number of these more, you know, fine art papers you want to have, you know, have available for only certain sizes. That's what we are already doing. Yeah, that, that's a bit of perfect possibility. I think that's the fine art premium, if I remember. <laughs> but uh, so, but e even in that case, you know, and again, I don't know who offers what or where, but if, if Val only had two out of the three, or Holyoke only had two out of the three, you could print those at her location, but print the third one here and do it shipped. You know, it, it, does, it does lend itself to that type of... Uh, differentiation, so. 
All right. Dave, just to confuse it one bit further. Sure. If you had two products that are going to two different desks, that you know, take the uh, two different products, one of those is going to get one could get printed at Portland, the other one has to get printed in all of us. And there's two jobs, one order. Can that order be split so that so that you're saying that you the Portland job can go to Portland? Yeah. It, could you, I hope it's a good idea and not cause me problems. Problem. Can you restrict that from happening? You said, I don't want to split an order. If, if, if Melrose has to do a job, I want Melrose to do the whole order. No. That's, that's not a feature. Um, that's what I meant to. Yeah. Yeah. It, if, if you can order multiple things that can only be printed in certain locations. The order will show up in the list as partial um, on both ends. So you know that the whole order is not where you are. But you will see the entire uh, invoice. So you'll know that there's other things involved. Uh, some required fields, you must have a name. It's reasonable. Um, and that's the name that the customers will see both at Photo Central and the kiosk. You must have a price. Zero price would uh, confuse everybody and cause problems. Uh, the display order is important. Display order just says which order is this coming up in uh, for the user. Uh, that's, that's entirely what it is. It, it, it just, so if, if you want to focus the 4x6 glossy, then that should be number one. If you'd rather the 4x6 matte or luster, then that should be number one. It's just a matter of which one sees first. Now, on the kiosk, it's actually a little bit more critical. Um, if you're ordering, uh, if you're allowing the, uh, the quick pick, not quick print, but I want to print one copy of every photo that I just loaded, the product that shows up in that box is the first product in the list. So if 4x6 Glossy is first, that's what's going to show up. If 4x6 luster is first, that's what's going to show up. If 8x10 is first, that's what's going to show up. So uh, we all know that nobody reads any text on any screens when they, when they go into any store or online. So, you know, I, I just, is I don't think. Does anyone have a really quick pick on order? Yeah. yeah. You could turn that off. It's not. It doesn't have to be on. But uh, I, I know that some people. I, I, I know that it's used. Yeah, it's but a great way of cutting strokes to completing the order. Right. You can get the customer to do it. Yeah, a customer comes in with a, you know, just came back from vacation and says, "I want one copy of every print that's on that I took on vacation." You know, it's one button to do it all. Sure. So. Yeah. So, um, optional fields of description, um, publish. It's optional because you can create a product that you're going to, you're planning on publishing next month, and that's why it's optional. It's not optional if you want to offer it today, but all I'm saying is to create a product, you don't have to do anything. Quantity pricing is optional, weight is optional, and fin finish options are optional. Uh, apply changes, we'll add the new product or uh, the edits and discard changes, the product disappears and all the changes disappear. Just as I said in the in last one, you have to apply and you have to say okay. If you say cancel, you will get a dialog box, but if you're as quick on the mouse as I am, and sometimes you'll cook it and regret it. But, I, <laughs> but you know, you will, you know, you will get a warning that Everything you've just done for the last hour is going to disappear if you continue on. Um, so we don't we don't force you to to lose it. Any questions on the products? Okay. Product groups. Um, going into this because again the kiosk has become you know there's been issues with how many products are on there and um, 
By the way, you, you should recognize these, these product groups, yes. I, I got a, um, one of the things you can do is copy products from one account to another account, so I created a servant of Hunt's and cut it, copied it into my master, and voila, I had everything that, um, I did that on purpose, but I'm not using Hunt's account for, for anything but uh, to copy. So, <clears throat> these are set up to um, create uh, smaller lists of, of products to show up, both on the kiosk and on Photo Central. Um, on Photo Central, if you display all the products, at some point you will get like one picture per page, one image. Pick it, go to the next one, pick it, go to the next one, because the list is so long, and we had to do it that way because at some point, scrolling down just becomes suffer such an effort for the customer that it they stop. So uh, using the product group, you can cut it down uh, to some kind of reasonable group. And I think these are, are, are broken up in a very reasonable way. Um, you have the glossy, certain sizes, uh, the luster, certain sizes, um, the Mitsubishi, uh, which is Manchester and Holyoke because of their print capabilities, um, the white borders, back borders, <coughs> the one thing looking at this list that I might add and um, is just a, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but a small group, 4x6s, 5x7s, 8x10s, uh, is, is that list, but include both glossy and luster. That might be a suggestion. And the reason for that, I don't know whether you've ever gone on the Photo Central and uh, Let's say you pick glossy, and you say, okay, I, I want this one glossy, and I want that one glossy, and then you go and try to change the uh, product group to luster, you've just lost what you did with glossy. You can't combine them that way. You would have to do all your glossy, then come back in and do your luster. You can do that. It's just not the, the flow that the customer would normally be used to. Um, you can put things into the, uh, the cart and then go back and do your luster or go back and do your borders. You know, I want some with borders and some without. Um, so that's why I say I, you know, I might create a, a group of just 4 by 6s or you know, 5 by 7s or something, but have the options for borders and not borders and lusters. Um, just a suggestion. Um, I think the groups are fine. Um, but as they say, if, if, they, if they want to mix and match, you know, luster and glossy, um, I don't know how the, often that happens. It happens uh, time. Yeah. Um, and if they're on all, then they have the choice of all. Right. It's just that the list is... A million right. So, and, that, and on the kiosk, what that means is clicking the button to go to the next page, the next page, the next page, the next page. So... It, Ironically, I'm called over several times a day because of this problem. This, to me, is a major problem because, you know, so yeah, I would like to fix the kiosk so that it's a little bit more easier. What, what type of... List. The product list. What, what type of issues do you have? Well, they'll, they'll start ordering glossy and then they'll go back and they want to they do luster and I'm always having, I'm always coming up with that, that Error saying you're going to lose all of your, uh, and be, yeah. you're going to lose all of your what, all the information. And what happens is because the customer has already started it, and I don't know, I don't know what they've been doing. I have to like restart the whole thing and go through the whole process with them. Yeah, so there. Uh, how often is yeah. that? It, it happens a couple of times. Because the first option is all. I, I know that, yeah, but the customer doesn't know that. Yeah. Well, that would be. So in your case, what is your default? Right. Do you default to all? I didn't know that. We can default to all. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we can, you can change the default. Actually, that is the default, I think. Uh, if, they hit, if they hit that so, other so button, you, Yeah, so your point, the only person who would use that is this kind of a savvy customer 
it will change the default. The downside of that is, that is the, and the reason we created product groups is because the list can get long, right. so you, you know you feel like you're you know you're just kind of scrolling in many pages, which they would be. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a fine art. I mean, it's just like you're trying to find the right balance right. point. Of, and I don't know. That's not a profile. That's a you know, modern question. Mm -hmm. No. Um, it would be nice if like the product button option was like down in the corner by itself, not right beside where they order because they hit that by mistake because the buttons are really they're right beside along each top. other. Yeah. Because they're sensitive screens, so they hit that in the middle of an order. This is this is just the kiosk for Yeah. 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 So I talked to Pete about this after the, one of the phone calls. So the logic that he built in was the logic we thought to protect the customer. You know, so we, we don't want you, you know, if, you're, if, if you have a, a you're using product groups and you start with something up in the fall, say someone spends 20 minutes ordering lust of prints and then they want to order one uh, glossy and then they Basically, they lose all those luster jobs that created. We could allow them to go. The, option, the other option is, is he's, in, he's put in the code to, to delete those. That, that's not by accident, that's by design. So we could basically remove that code to allow that to happen. Then you end up with the opposite problem, which is someone spends all this time looking at Lusted to start out with, said, oh, no, 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 I want it glossy, so I really don't want any of those lusted jobs, and they would get the lusted jobs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, putting it out there saying, that's the logic. The logic is, you know, to, is to be that we did the groups thinking someone would only want to order from one group, and we, we want to, so we're getting rid of everything else, and that this function breaks down when they really want to jump from group to group. That is, that's, you know, so if there's a, given what your customer experience is, is a better way of configuring it? Well, I think one of the problems when we were talking about this was the font size and color of where it says groups and products. And just the general wording, it's not clear what each menu just is on, really Are we talking just on the chaos? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I think it just says product. So let's look. After Dave leaves, let's you and I go up there. Yeah, there's something. groups and products. Right, and it doesn't mean anything. Kind of a, and it's also very small and gray. And maybe if they were just different colors, you know, yeah. a and little bit further clearer. Apart. Actually, yeah, I think it's, yeah further it's apart. It's confusing that the same products are listed <laughs> in two categories, for example. Yeah. Um, that it's in the all and then it's in the finish. So all this discussion pertains just to the kiosk. Yeah. Yeah. This point. Yeah. The if if when you get called over because the person is panicked and said, "I'm going to lose everything I just did," um, my suggestion, if if they really want those, and and Joe described the other case where they picked all these lusters and said. Oh no, I really didn't want those. I wanted them to be glossy. Um, but the, the, uh, the option is to say no, I really don't want to lose all this. Go through, and on the last page, there is order again. If you press that, you'll go right back to the ordering. You won't have to reload the, the images. Everything stays there. And then they can pick the, the glossy or the, the lust or whatever and put in a second order. You know, at least they haven't lost everything, mm -hmm. and that's that's one of the reasons we put that order again. The they don't have to reload all the images. Yeah. They don't want to hit done. They want to sit order again and go back. Yeah, and yeah. I've done that with people. Yeah. In, in general, again, it's just one of these things that it's hard to communicate. But that order again button, uh, we we have assert that you want customers to use that as much as possible. Like every job, they if they make one card design. Place the order for maybe the product. maybe the verbiage could be better because order again might sound to them like I'm just duplicating the order. Maybe add to order or something where we're continue you know something where yeah, it's no order. Continue, well, continue, continue shopping that sort of but, thing. But the, yeah. the, the, I think the logic we said 
You get at a kiosk to push you, you hate more than I hate. Someone's been there for a half hour and something happens, something screws up. Whatever it is, something screws up and they just like frustrated. So one way of doing that is to shorten the kiosk transaction times by using order again. Just every job, let them finish that. So if they present you with five orders, I mean, you don't really care. As opposed to one right. big order with five jobs. Exactly. But I, like I said, I think order again can be used as them. I think they think that I'm just duplicating the order. Like right, order right, again. Right. So I, I'm, we're open to new uh, copy points. Yeah, I'm, I mean, whatever, you know. You can that's something we can change in themes, right? The wordage no. or? I, 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 I think we're going to take a look. Okay. It might okay. be. Yeah, that one might be. It could be add to order. Yeah, add to order. It sounds much better. Yeah, see, I would, I would say to me, but they've already got an order number, but how do I add to it, you know? I, I'm not sure I like that terminology a whole lot better. Um, but that, that's the purpose of product groups. And as I said, I, I, have, I think these product groups are, are, are very logical. Uh, my only suggestion might be to highlight the 4 by 6 5 by 7 and 8 by 10 I would, I would imagine those are probably the most popular um, from the kiosk, and, uh, from what I see. Um, so you might want a small group with just those six or eight, whatever it is. Um, just a suggestion. Uh, the other, the, the, the show on the, on the right um, is the other grouping method. Uh, and basically what it does is it matches the, uh, the terminology in the product name, like fine art or fine art standard. And that's what you, type in. In fact, this fine arts would not work because it's fine art right. and not fine arts, and that would fail. Right. So that's my error when I set this up. Um, I can spell, I really can. I just don't copy well. But anyway, the point is that that makes it, you know, uh, uh, you know what's going to come up every time because it's going to be glossy, it's going to be matte or luster or whatever, but it has to match exactly um, the name that's in the product. So if it's uh, uppercase and lowercase mixed, it's not going to work. Uh, so that's just another option. Um, I don't know whether that would fall into what you have here or not, because you have extra verbiage and, and the like. Um, but that's, that's another option. I just wanted to make it known to you, um, not suggesting it's better or worse. Depends upon your application. Uh, here we go with Harvest Rules. Uh, harvest rules, and all I'm suggesting with this is a way to, to organize uh, your harvest rules. Because what you need, and this is the hardest part about harvest rules, you have to figure out who can print what at what location. And what I did here was random, obviously random. Um, I put Melrose, Portland, Holyoke, and I didn't put Manchester and, you know, Cambridge. But, and then I put all the products, and I said, okay, Melrose can print this, and Melrose can print that, and Melrose, and I just went down the list. And I did the same thing with Portland, and I said, as I say, I'm not trying to say that this is what you print, just, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a way of setting it up. Um, did the same with Holyoke. Now, I, then you get to the next level. Um, maybe Melrose can print uh, matte, but they can't print glossy. And Portland can print glossy, but they can't print. And basically, you wind up with a, 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 an account for each one. You might, maybe the posters can only be printed in, you know, the 20 by 30 posters can only be printed in, um, in Portland, for whatever reason. Uh, so you, you'd want to have an account that says, okay, the name of it is posters. Uh, that's, that's the store name is posters. Uh, and they only harvest 20 by 30 posters. And I know Carolyn's been through all this and uh, she still has hair, so that's not too bad. Because uh, I, I know it's very difficult, uh, especially setting up the first pass. Uh, because you have a combination of stores, you have a combination of who prints what, 
But the whole idea behind this is to be able to print all of your products for every store, even if it can't be printed at that store. And that's the whole idea about, um, about harvest rules. And what I'm going to do, and harvest rules are only available on, to edit, is only available in the master account. It's the only place it should be ever done. Um, and you come up with something like this, and I only did one, just because I was lazy. Um, you create a store ID, and again, that is nothing but text. I mean, it's nice to say Melrose, and you know it's Melrose in Portland, and you know it's Portland. But it really, you know, you could use your store number if you use store numbers. Uh, it can be really any text you want. Uh, and then you determine, based on that store ID, what is going to be printed there. Um, you, might have, you, know, you might have the rule in your company that everything is shipped out of Melrose. So you might have just a shipping, you know, a, a shipping store ID. And you'd set up an account that says shipping. And anything that's going to be shipped comes into that account and gets shipped out of Melrose or shipped out of Portland. Uh, if you have two places you're shipping under, out of, then you have to uh, define it differently. Uh, the, the list at the bottom is a list of the stores, the available pickup places. And I put it that way because, you know, you might have a, a, just a place where somebody picks up photos and they have no uh, printing capability at all. But um, you can set that up. It's, it's simple to add a store, add a store, then it gets complicated. We'll, we'll just say Portland. Now, what's going to be harvested in Portland? Well, UPS Portland's going to be harvested there. And somewhere in here is pickup. No, it's first one. Um, and that, now you have to go through all the products and decide what products are going to be picked. And it does have a you know, a little bit of help. Um, those are just the folded cards. So now you can go through those. Um, fine art. Fine art a standard product? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, only, I only wanted that. I only wanted something with... Uh, Not there. Um, pardon? Well, you said it's not there. Do you have anything else with um, finish options? Um, well, yeah, the, the, the two fine arts have finish options, and uh, the, the flat cards have finish options. OK. Hmm. Those but not on one of them. Yeah, it should. Those should be there. Hmm. Interesting. That's why I hate to do demos. <laughs> it always fails. Um, yeah, there should be a sub menu. Yeah, there's, it, it, it basically expands like a, a tree, and it should show the, uh, uh, the, the different finish options that you can print at various uh, locations and, mm -hmm. and, and that. So that's what I was trying to show and failed. Um, and then, you know, save changes so the next time you go in. Now, you also want to be aware uh, that at the individual uh, stores, and maybe I should have brought this up with the, the servant account, but most everybody's here anyway, um, you can test your harvest rules. And it'll tell you what will be harvested at that location. So you can just go through here. And, uh, and look at it. I don't have it set up to, to do all that. So, uh, But if, if there were things under, if, if this was set up, I'll say properly, uh, you would get a list of all the products that would be printed at your location. You could take a look and say, oh, I, I can't do that. You know, and then tell who's ever doing the master account that 
looks like something's amiss here. Uh, so so that, that's the harvest rules. Uh, I know they're not easy, but they are very functional. And uh, they do work well once you get them set up. Just takes a while. Any questions? Carolyn, don't, don't bog them on mine too much now. Because <laughs> I know you could. I know, you, I know what that was. All right, Retail Central. I was asked to add this at the, uh, at the end. So Retail, Retail Central is a, a web application that uh, can be accessed basically from any browser, anywhere. You can look at your view, print, and export is pretty common. Export order logs, consumer lists. Those are, those are anybody that is actually not a guest and has submitted an order. Uh, not even submitted an order, but has logged in to your account and created an account. You can uh, take a look at your kiosk deployment, you know, where they are, the, the um, serial numbers are all in there. Uh, you can look at your photo central accounts. You can upload and specify uh, custom content uh, for photo central. You can manage your cloud cover, and uh, Joe's going to go through that. Uh, manage your contact information. Um, by the way, I think that should be changed because I think Val is still, yeah, she's still <laughs> on there. That's where you would change it. Okay. Uh, create and view print credits and purchase and view storage con uh, coupons. That's what we were talking about uh, earlier about storage, extending storage. Um, <coughs> this is the login and the uh, first page. Uh, login, uh, you were given a, a retailer ID and a password uh, when, when you came on uh, as a customer. And this is the, uh, the menu that comes up. And it looks sort of like that. And this is your account because I went online to find out what it was. Um, so as far as orders are concerned, uh, you can look at an auto log for Photo Central. You can get monthly totals. Of course, should have done this yesterday. So it logs you off if you haven't been on long, uh, in a long time, haven't done anything. That's a security feature yeah, more than exactly. anything. It's just so that somebody you doesn't. Away from your computer, right. Can mess with it. Right. So these are monthly totals uh, beginning in. Uh, I'm not sure how, the, how long it goes. There we go. Uh, August of 2016. Um, yeah. So this is like 20 entries, but this would go all the way back to the early days of Val. Yeah. But December of 2017 was almost $14,000. Uh, so you, you can look at, you know, just trends and, and things like that. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. It knows I'm in. Uh, yeah, should be a back. Uh, kiosk auto log. Uh, again, these are orders placed on the kiosks, and you got the serial numbers so you can figure out what store. Uh, there was two placed. Uh, so I was talking about valid email. NA would not pass the test. <laughs> um, NM, NM. So, uh, but those those are different logs that you can look at. Um, all orders for the last 30 days. All jobs. All emails. This is your consumer list. This is everybody that has created account, an account under Graphics 383 uh, and how much revenue they've generated. So you can, you can also um, sort this. I think it's going to go reverse of what I really want. So this is why you want everyone to enroll. Because you can't really see who the best customers are. OK. So here's the uh, here's the highest the high end of the of the of the list. Um, 
The last time he was on was just before Christmas, but total revenue is almost $8,000. Um, so you can look at that um, and, and just determine lots of things, you know, sort it. and You can print it, you can export it. Um, you can do advanced searches based on first name, last name, last visit, you know, uh, how long they've been a member. So, uh, my kiosks will just give you a list of uh, the kiosks that are active and uh, online. Content manager. Uh, these are these are some of the content for your images on. This on is the, all your custom content. Right. right. This is the stuff that has been created, like. Images for gifts and buttons and banners and right. Um, I'm going to skip the cloud cover. I'm going to let Joe take that one. Um, print coupons. You can give out coupons. Uh, you know, somebody buys a camera, you can here you get a hundred, you know, free four by sixes. And, um, you can you can print the coupons from here uh, to do that. Uh, you can. Do it based on product. You can do it based on a number of uh, different uh, options uh, within it. Have you ever used these? I haven't used this. No. And the last one was the storage coupons. Um, that is not what I was expecting. Excuse me. Hmm. There should be the ability to create a storage coupon. Uh, the bottom is contacts. This is where you would. I wonder if I've, I. I did lose my. Um, Internet before. I'm wondering if I lost it again. No? Nope. So I, I, I remember looking at that and it being empty like that. Really? Yeah. Because I looked at it back in my office yesterday before I did this simply because I didn't want this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's interesting. And so uh, this, sometimes you can quick jump back to the main menu. That's cool. I said I hate uh, demos because this always happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, okay. The quick jump feature doesn't show all the options of the menu. Ah, good to know. Yeah, that's a, so, that's a, that's a gotcha. so this is where you could buy storage coupons uh, to give to your customers and extend their. And then uh, basically just tax on to our monthly bill. Right. right. Well, that, bill. I'll have to ask him that, but. What do you, you mean, cloud cover? No, 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 just, just on this, these print credits and storage credits. Okay. Oh, that's what we were seeing was storage coupon summary. Correct. And there was, there was no summary. That shows you what you issued. Yeah. The reason yeah. I just wanted to bring this up now is given that you are a hard good company, this would be a way to tie in more system solutions and more promotions and a tie between your hardwood sales and your photo finishing by, by creating print coupons. So if you just click, if you just click on that create print coupon. So this allows you, I mean, this is basically like photo print currency. You generate these 16-digit 
unique IDs. If I, so if you said I want to create, um, I want to offer 10, 10 by 10 fine art premium prints, I'm going to get a, a unique number that you could print onto a coupon card that you could associate with a $500 camera set. And so I'm going to get this card with this 16-digit this number on it. You can use it for Photo Central, you can use it to Kiosk, you can do it for one transaction, you can use it for one transaction or for multiple transactions. So it's really like a it's a it's really like a debit card. It's real cash for photo printing. So it, it, the reason again I bring it up is it would be a way for you to tie to all your hard goods sales the fact that you now do photo finishing by adding print by coupons to your hard goods sales. And it, could, and it could be featuring a specific, you know, like the same said, you could feature it to a specific product. So you're saying, hey, we really want to promote, you know, 16 by 20 printing on fine art paper. We're offering, you know, the Moab paper as the, as the premium coupon for this month. So there's a lot you could do with this. So where does it print out on? So it, what, it, what all it does, it's going to generate, see that distribution to me? Mm -hmm. You, you can um, just, you, you would just generate, let's just try one right now there. Click. Just going to generate a number that you're going to see right here that you would cut. Like if you wanted to print these onto a, onto a Hunts, like photo print debit card, all you really need are the numbers. So it's just going to generate a list of numbers for you right here that you would then take those numbers and export them and print them onto the cards. And so those numbers on the cards would then become usable you know, print currency. Um, so, and again, we're happy to you know, test this with you in detail if you really want so to try. Is that the code? That's, That's the code. Right there. You take that and put it into a kiosk or online. That's where the promotion code area Correct. is. You type yeah. it in there and then it will fly. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's different than a that's different than a promotion code. So if that's not clear, that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up here because promotion these are created in Photo Central. And they are these unique numbers that literally are like a debit card. That's totally separate from a promotion code which is a code that gets generated. If you wanted to offer 20% off, different from that, if I wanted to offer 20% off of all 16 by 20 prints for the month of March, I generated a promotion code. And we call that, you know, March 20. Yeah. You know, everyone, who, everyone who gets that code can use it as many times as they want in the month of March. So, Again, that would be something that say, hey, we're really promoting this. We're going to put it in a flyer for wide distribution. Um, so that would be the use of promotion codes. These print credits are, you know, are, are really like currency to specific customers that you want to, you know, give these to. You could also use these. You could generate these. Uh, you know, you, this. With these, you could generate these. You could have a $50 card that you sell for 40 bucks. So if there's a way you wanted to get prepaid um, revenue on these. Because these, cause these can, or, you know, you can see it, there's a feature up there that says one-time use. You can actually make these work like a debit card so they can be used in multiple transactions. So it's, it's something worth kind of exploring. I mean, I think given your footprint, given the strength of the company, this is something that really might be a good feature to take a look at. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry. And other than cloud cover, that's um, pretty much uh, retail with central. And that's it. Any other questions?
And, and I'll invite you, if, if you come up with more questions, which is what I always do after I get out of here, and um, you know, just send something in to support at graphics. Uh, you know, put training class, Hunt's training class or something. And I'll know it's definitely for me. And uh, you know, I'll get back to you. I'll do my best with answering as much, but um, yeah, if you just send it to supportive graphics, I'll get it. Well, that is it. Cool.